Hello everyone, welcome back to another brain teaser. Today we're going to take a look at a problem that aims to figure out how to make a method return without an error. As always, the information with links for the repository as well as any mistakes or addendums will be found down in the video description below. So let's dive in and take a look. So this is going to be the get values without error brain teaser from the repository. Uh, and a shout out to Adam for sending me the first version of this problem that we're going to take a look at. So we're going to jump in and I'm going to grab the get values without error branch. And let's take a look at that in Visual Studio. So here we have a very simple unit test. We are invoking numbers dot get values explicitly passing in a null. And you can see here that the method itself takes in a nullable int. But the very first thing the method does is immediately check that int value for null. The double question mark is the null coalescing operator, saying that if the value on the left hand side of the double question mark is null, then we'll do the thing on the right, which in this case throws an argument null exception. Now for this brain teaser, the goal is to not edit anything above line 19. So all of this stuff is off limits. We are only allowed to edit the contents of the method below this line. So I'll give people a moment. If you want to pause the video, give yourself a chance to solve it. Maybe check out the repo. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, let's dive in and take a look at the solution. So the key thing for the solution here is the fact that the get values method is an I enumerable return. That's sort of a special case here, as C Sharp has a concept of iterator methods. The way that you turn a regular method into an iterator method is with the yield statement. So there's both yield return and yield break. But effectively, what this ends up doing is an iterator method is not a method with a single return. Rather, as the name implies, it will iterate and can return one value at a time as the I enumerable gets iterated on. The other thing that I enumerable or iterator methods uh, come with is the idea of deferred execution. So when you invoke an iterator method, it is not uh, actually called right away. So if you were to put a breakpoint here, when you run this test, you will not actually hit this breakpoint. Now, if instead you were to do something like invoke, say, maybe to list, a link method, you'll then see that this test starts failing because now that we actually start asking for the values out of the enumerator, which is what the to list uh, link method does, or if we were to use this in a for each or similar, that would then cause the enumerable uh, to start being iterated and we would then have to evaluate this. Because of this deferred execution, this is actually uh, probably the wrong implementation of the method. So a, a correct implementation would be uh, down here. So we'll just expand this out and take a look at it. Typically, when you are creating I enumerable and iterator methods, especially if they are going to have uh, preconditioned checks like this null checking incoming a parameter, you want to separate the iterator method from the precondition check. The easiest way to do this is to break it into two methods. And I've done this by using a local function, but this could easily just be a second method sitting right alongside the main method. You'll note, even though this is an I enumerable return, nowhere inside of this correct get values actually uh, uses the yield statement. So this is just going to be a regular method. It has an I enumerable return, nothing fancy. So this part will be invoked right away. We then call into this implementation version of the method, which does use the yield statement. So this will be an iterator method. It will have deferred execution. So we will get this check that occurs immediately when correct get values is done. But then the actual iteration where we may go off and get values, it could take a while, various things could occur there. Um, this will end up being deferred until it starts to be iterated. So there it is. There's the solution. Uh, as always, check out the Brain Teaser repository for more. Till next time, happy coding.